International regulatory pressures on financial institutions at large to prevent money laundering and thwart terrorist financing have strongly intensified during the past decade. The focus on the source of funds and on who you can and can't do business with has come under increased governmental scrutiny. Direct fines, license revocation, as well as damage to reputation to those doing business with illegal entities, companies, and people are now risks that need to be seriously taken into account by financial institutions. Given the volumes of messages, transactions, transfers, given the complexity of the operations and the large number of illegal entities, it is a must that institutions equip themselves correctly with automated software and adequate procedures. This is the only way for financial institutions to ensure that they have the means in place to meet compliance regulations. Entirely manual approaches are simply insufficient. In most jurisdictions, AML regulation requires financial institutions to monitor, investigate, and report transactions made with dubious or suspicious counterparties anywhere in the payment chain. Financial institutions have to make sure the beneficiary, the order giver, as well as the entire series of intermediaries are not listed as entities it is illicit to do business with. This includes countries through which funds are not allowed to pass or countries where funds are not allowed to be deposited, typically non-cooperative ones. These checks are part of wider KYC, Know Your Customer policies that are becoming increasingly important globally to fight identity theft, money laundering, as well as terrorist financing. By checking names of companies and individuals in transactions, financial institutions will get a view on whether or not the business they are conducting is considered legal by the local regulator, as well as regulators that may be of importance to the bank should it do business outside of its country's borders. EastNets offers a cost-effective and rapidly deployable anti-money laundering filtering solution with EN SafeWatch filtering. This solution has been on the market for over a decade now and has undergone considerable improvements over that period and is now considered as one of the market leaders with over 350 installations worldwide in over 80 countries. This breadth of deployment is a testimony to the flexibility of the solution in terms of addressing multiple regulatory and reporting constraints. Both local banks and global banks benefit from this adaptability and scalability to comply with ever-changing needs imposed on filtering and customer due diligence. EN SafeWatch filtering serves as the central data processor for the identification of blacklisted entities. The system is now geared for real-time analysis of the content of both inbound and outbound messages 24 hours per day, 7 days a week. The system also takes into account the fact that regulations and attitudes of banks towards risk have also evolved. Initially, only cross-border messages over a certain threshold needed to be investigated. The latest trends have it that even new types of payments such as SEPA in Europe, NACHA in the U.S. need to be scanned, and XML format messages. This has pushed financial institutions to look beyond quick-fix solutions and have required the implementation of cost-effective and efficient solutions geared towards multiple interdict lists and massive volumes and different formats of messages and customers to be checked. Technically speaking, EN SafeWatch filtering is a web-based anti-money laundering scanning solution built using market standard databases and platforms, based on an open architecture and easily integrated with any banking application for data capture, whether these be financial messages, customer databases, or other. The two key challenges addressed by the filter are a combination of speed of execution and reduction of false positives. The speed of execution requires the latest scanning technologies to be implemented at several levels. Ability to handle large volumes of content to be scanned, messages, customer databases, customer or company names. Ability to compare this content with large lists of interdicted entities. These lists of blacklisted entities, politically exposed people, internal lists overlap at times and evolve rapidly. Ability to link lists together and recognize in an automated fashion when a given name is in several lists. The reduction of false positives is a subset of speed of execution that is looked at closely by the regulator. Typically, the automated scanning filter needs to help the compliance operator pinpoint suspicious messages or names. 
Most of the task in setting aside non-suspicious names can be done by the system without manual assistance. This, however, leaves a pool of messages or names containing the real positives that require manual investigation. Obviously, the scanning filter can be tuned to reduce false positives without risking a false negative. This truly differentiates the EastNet's filter from less performing ones. These characteristics may not have a great impact in smaller institutions, but in medium to large institutions, the workload and the efficiency of the compliance department is closely related to bit speed of message processing and the percentage of messages that go to manual review. In smaller institutions, however, the sheer complexity of the checks to be performed makes it difficult to have an all-out manual approach. A further feature that comes into play is the amount of information and how that information is presented to facilitate the review of the hit and document the decision as to whether or not the hit was a false one. Four major risks are addressed by a sanctions and embargo filter in screening for money launderers, fraudsters, and terrorists. Banks can also use the filters based on their own internal lists to follow up on high-risk entities or individuals. Not addressing these risks can and has translated itself in civil penalties, amounting to millions of euros, revocation of banking licenses for certain branches, and irremediable reputation risk. Failure to block or reject and report a suspicious transaction. Each regulatory body which maintains a list of interdicts also has a set of rules and procedures to follow once the compliance officer has identified a true positive. This may involve blocking the funds, rejecting the funds, or simply reporting the operation. In any case, a suspicious activity report, SAR, will need to be completed and sent to the regulator. Failure to document a list risk assessment. The AML risk assessment related to interdict lists is one of the stepping stones of compliance risk management and KYC. The usage of the tool, of the workflow, of escalation and decision points all need to be documented and personnel trained and made aware. This risk assessment document should be approved by the board of directors and updated when there are changes in the customer base, in the product offering, or in the regulations themselves. Failure to check the content of transactions based on the bank's risk is an important point for the financial institution to take into consideration. The regulation constitutes a framework for all institutions, but does not specify a number of thresholds and frequencies that need to be decided upon by the individual institution itself. The compliance department needs to determine what transactions need to be checked automatically and which ones not. It needs to decide upon a strategy to check the customer database. There will always be some manual checks related to parties that are not account holders or for which the information has not been digitalized. Some monetary instruments below a certain amount may also only be checked on a random basis. Failure to use updated and completed lists is a big headache for financial institutions given the number of lists, the number of sources, the differences of frequency in publication, the overlaps between lists, their specificities, and their applicability. This failure to use the correct version of a list can also be a complete failure to include a type of list such as a PEP list which have come under increased interest given recent political turmoil. Transaction filtering is a day-to-day -day activity that is normally managed by compliance professionals such as AML analysts or investigators. They are responsible for reviewing their customer transactions, investigating unusual counterparties, and reporting unusual activity to compliance management or National Financial Intelligence Units, FIUs. The process of filtering transactions is very simple and can be broken up into three major steps. First, we import the financial transactions data or customer data into our detection engine and their content is matched with the content of the lists containing the interdict or PEP entries. The indexation of the lists is a real challenge to determine whether an entry is the same in different lists even though it is spelled differently or when a given company or individual uses multiple names. The concept of AKA, also known as, is often used here as well as differentiating information, such as the address or ID numbers. 
From a technical perspective, formatting the financial transaction data, as well as the customer data, is also required so that the scanning engine can understand the input from the back office system. Data source connectors are used at this step to provide uniform and comparable data to the matching engine. At the end of the scanning process, the ranking and status of the violation will be calculated, taking into account the configuration and the good guys present in the engine. As a result, the EN SafeWatch filtering engine will present a list of alerts or detections to the investigator for review. In the third step, the application will be used to help the investigator review the alerts generated by the EN SafeWatch filter detection engine. EastNets has developed a detection analyzer that allows investigators to review the alerts in a user-friendly manner. The investigator can examine the alert with full details, including the lists against which the detection was made. In addition, investigators also have an integrated workflow process to manage, assign, or reassign detection alerts. Finally, full-fledged reports can be made and stored as traceability of due diligence and respective compliance procedures. The key element of the filter engine is to matching names in messages and customer databases with those in interdict lists, and then to eventually establish correspondences with codified lists such as the BIC+. The combination of the detection algorithms below power the identification of matches and explain both speed and the false hit ratio. The engine supports misspelling errors such as double letters, inserted letters, missing letters, and swapped letters. In each of the cases above, a smaller score will be attributed to the match, but a match will nonetheless be established. Letters which are not identical but sound similar will also be considered when matching two strings of characters. Once again, a smaller matching score will be attributed. Certain words, such as the, of, a, which are not discriminating, will be ignored from the sequence of characters compared. Since they do not bring value to the comparison given, they can be considered as non-relevant because they appear in many sequences. Short words will be given less weight in the matching score given the fact that the longer the sequence that matches, the more probable there is a correspondence between the two strings. When considering the names of individuals, last names will be given more weight than first names since they are more pertinent in describing a person than the first name. The engine has a built-in capacity to split first names from last names when these are attached. Unexpected or inserted words are also identified and taken into consideration. The order in which the words are identified will not affect the matching engine, but will affect the final score given to the match. All in all, it's the combination and the order in which the engine performs the tasks above that influences the speed of the engine and the false hit rate. For example, should phonetics not be considered, the engine will be faster, the false hit rate will be lower, but the probability of missing a real hit will be higher, which is a trade-off which will not be acceptable to the regulator. However, giving a higher rate to last names coupled with the first name last name splitting mechanism will make the engine slower, but the false hit rate lower. These are the sort of trade-offs that need to be carefully considered when implementing a scanning engine. Business requirements related to regulatory demands need to be balanced with automation of processes and tuning of the filter.